Hey guys, this is Anshu and I hope your studies are going very well. Now again I'm back with the fourth tutorial of EIPMT 2008 question paper from biology section. So today again we will be solving some interesting questions and figuring out the answer of those typical MCQs to boost up your confidence and your score in NEAT. And guys, if you like this tutorial and you want to practice more such questions, you can just follow my Unacademy profile. So, we will just be continuing with further questions. So, let's start. Okay, in the continuation with the previous tutorial, here is question number 39 in front of you. And remember, don't just listen to the answer. First, try to answer the question on your own. And then listen to the answer as well as the explanation of it. Good luck to you. So the question number 39 reads, Quercus species are the dominant component in. Basically you have to tell in which of the following forests Quercus species is found. I hope you answered it correctly. The correct answer is option number 3, temperate deciduous forests. It's because Quercus species found find the suitable environment to grow in temperate deciduous forests and guys let me tell you this topic from ecology section is one of the most important topics in class 12th ncrt so i would suggest you to go through these topics and remember all the types of forests and the species which are dominant in them good luck to you we are moving forward to the next question so the next question is Vascular tissues in flowering plants develop from. So you have to tell from which of the following layer vascular tissues develop. I hope your answer was right. So the correct answer is option number 4. That is vascular tissues or the, the steel or sometimes even the epidermis is formed by the layer pleurome. Now again we are moving to the next question. Gel electrophoresis is used for. It's a very easy question and straight away from NCRT, please do answer it correctly. Yes, you are right. The correct option is option number 4, separation of DNA fragments according to their size. If you remember the diagram of gel electrophoresis, this is where the electrophoresis of DNA used to start in agarose gel and the smaller particles used to move here whereas the larger particles remained here itself and remember this word size they are separated according to their size they will confuse you with the words shape uh, their weight etc etc but you have to remember the word size and no any other such word okay now we are moving forward to the next question question number 42 which one of the following pairs of organs includes only the endocrine glands? Guys, to answer this question, you must know the difference between endocrine and exocrine glands. So the basic difference between the two is, in exocrine glands, they secrete their hormones through a duct. Whereas in endocrine glands, they secrete their hormones directly into the blood without help of any duct. I hope you get it right. Yes, the correct answer is option number 3, that is parathyroid and adrenal gland. They are a type of endocrine gland and they secrete their hormones directly into the blood. Now, we are moving forward to the next question. Next question is easy yet interesting. You can answer it by just thinking a bit more. It reads, haploids are more suitable for mutation studies than the diploids. This is because... Why you have to tell? Okay, so the correct answer is option number 2. That is all mutations whether dominant or recessive are expressed in haploids. Guys, as you know, in any diploid organism, only the dominant allele is expressed whereas the recessive one remains silent. And if the recessive one is having some defect, it won't be expressed due to the presence of the dominant allele. Whereas in haploids, whatever the traits or alleles are present, they will be expressed as such. That's why to study the mutation, haploid organisms are the best. Hence the answer is option number 2. 
Now we are moving forward to the next question. Question number 44. Here you have to read these four points and you have to tell which two of them are correct with regard to a desert animal such as kangaroo rat. Read them carefully and try to answer. So the correct answer is option number 4. That means points 2 and 3 are correct. Now you know that in desert areas there is very 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 less water. Hence the kangaroo rat which lives in desert needs certain adaptations to survive. That's why what they do they do not drink water. They breathe at a slow rate to conserve water and they have their body covered with three thick hairs. So basically what I am trying to say is they have every measure to conserve water. Also they feed on dry seeds because that's obvious they don't get any water. So they feed themselves on dry seeds only and they do not require drinking water. I hope it's clear to you. Now we are moving forward to the next question. Here is question number 45. Which one of the following is not a characteristic of phylum Annelida? Notice this word not and you have to tell which one of the following is not a characteristic of the phy of phylum Annelida. All the best. Try to answer it. Okay, so the correct answer is option number 1 pseudocilum. Guys, pseudocilum is not found in any Lida, but it's found in S. J. helminthes or the round worms. Anelida is the phylum from which the earthworm belongs. Rest three characteristics that is the ventral nerve cord, the closed circulatory system and the segmentation are correct for the phylum Anelida but pseudocilum is incorrect. That's why this is the answer. Now the next question. Question number 46. In human adult female oxytocin what? So you have to tell what does oxytocin does in human adult female. Just choose the correct option. Yes, it's the very easy question and straight away from NCRT. And the correct answer for this question is option number 2. That is, oxytocin causes strong uterine contractions during parturition. I hope you got it. Now we are moving forward to the next question. The most active phagocytic white blood cells are. So you have to choose which of the following are the most active phagocytic white blood cells? Okay, this is the type of question where eventually you have to remember the answer. And the correct answer is option number 2. That is neutrophils and monocytes are the type of phagocytic white blood cells which are most active. Now we are moving forward to the next question. Question number 48. In which one of the following male and female Gametophytes do not have free living independent existence. You just have to tell which one of the following option is correct for the given condition. Okay guys the correct answer is option number 2 Cedrus. Actually Cedrus is the type of gymnosperm in which the male and female gametophytes do not have free living independent existence. Okay now we will moving to the next question. Question number 49. What is vital capacity of our lungs? Let me tell you this is a very 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 important topic. Mark it as many stars as possible and do read it from NCRT thoroughly. Now just try to answer this question. Okay so friends the correct answer is option number 2 that is the total lung capacity minus residual volume. First of all you will have to learn the definition of all these words that is the total lung capacity and residual volume which is given very well in NCERT itself. Though I would like to define vital capacity for you. Actually vital capacity is the maximum volume of air that a person can breathe in after a forced expiration. Hence it comes out to be the total lung capacity which is the maximum volume the, of air that can be accommodated in lung minus the residual volume which is the air which is left out in the lungs always. And its value for your kind information is 
4600 milliliters. Now we will be moving on to the next question which is question number 50. The, it says which one of the following is heterosporous? That is, in which of the following options the spores are of different types? Okay, so guys, this is the type of question where you have to remember the answer. So, the correct answer is option number 4, Salvinia. Actually, what does heterosporous mean? Heterosporous means the spores, that is the male and the female spores are of different types in their structure. Whereas if it is homosporous, they will look same. Now we are moving forward to the next question. Question number 51. The blood calcium level is lowered by the deficiency of. It's a very important question. Please do try to answer it well. Okay, so the correct answer is option number 3. That is parathormone. Guys, please don't be confused. Parathormone and calcitonin work antagonistic to each other and parathormone decreases the blood calcium level whereas calcitonin increases the blood calcium level. So please avoid any confusion within these two points. Now the next question, question number 52. The C4 plants are photosynthetically more efficient than C3 plants because let me tell you one question from this topic was asked in tutorial second as well. So that means this topic is very very important so be thorough with it. Now just try to answer this question. It's a very easy question and the correct answer for that is option number 2. That's very obvious. C4 plants are photosynthetically more efficient just because they have more chloroplasts than the C3 plants. Now we are moving forward to the next as well as the last question. It's a very easy question. Please do try to answer it correctly. Which one of the following phyla is correctly matched with its two general characteristics? Do concentrate on both the characteristics and do try to answer it well. Out of the four options, the second option is correct because in second option only both the characters of mollusca are correctly given. That is normally oviparous and development through a trochophore or veliger larva. Guys, this is very important. This topic you need to learn thoroughly from NCRT. All the phylums as well as their characteristics are asked in some or the other way each and every year. So here I am ending this tutorial with this question and we will be continuing in the next tutorial. So good luck to you. Keep working hard. Bye bye.